Hello AP Biology students, this is going to be the first unit of AP Biology content. We're going to go over the chemistry of life. For my lectures, I have this unit separated into 10 different sections. And these sections are going to be labeled with the unit and then the section number. These section numbers are not going to correlate with the unit sections that the AP Central gives to teachers because I like to organize it just a little bit differently, but I'll be going over all of the content for the unit. As you can see in unit one, we're gonna go over atoms and what makes up matter. So let's get into it. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Typically, we like to focus on the three types of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, but there are exceptions to this rule of only having three, like plasma. I like to kind of review the concepts of pure substances and mixtures in my class. Pure substances are like a single element or a single compound, while mixtures are combinations of these elements and compounds. And there's two different types. You have homogeneous and heterogeneous. You can see the difference here. An element is a substance that cannot be broken down into a simpler substance without changing its property. Now, technically, yes, you can break down elements and atoms into their subatomic particles. But that, again, would then change the properties of the atom or element. These six elements are going to be really fundamental for our understanding of biochemistry. They are carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Now, the atomic theory basically states that elements are made up of tiny particles called atoms and that everything is typically made of some type of atom. I should clarify that everything that is matter is made up of some type of atom or element. I know when you get down to the kind of the details of chemistry, this can get kind of wishy-washy, but for an AP biology understanding of chemistry and the atomic theory, everything that's matter is made up of atoms. Within an atom, you have subatomic particles. These are protons, electrons, and neutrons. Subatomic particle just means a smaller portion of the atom. And each one of these subatomic particles is going to have a charge. Protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged, and neutrons have no charge. I like to show this animation when talking about atoms to students because this shows a major misconception about the atom that people have. As you can see, the protons and neutrons are located in the center of the atom while the electrons are traveling around them. Now this, in fact, is true. The protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus and these electrons are in the electron clouds or orbitals. However, these electrons don't travel in circular motions like this, like planets around our sun. I think this animation gives us a good starting point for understanding the concept of an atom, but it's a lot more complicated and detailed than this. Like I said before, the protons and neutrons are located in the center of the atom called the nucleus. This is different from the nucleus of a cell. The electrons are located in these things called orbitals or shells. There are a couple different names for where the electrons are located and it deals with how you're talking about their relation to the atom. But something to remember about an atom is that an atom is mostly made of empty space. I like this diagram that shows the nucleus being very small in the center and the electrons are in the orbitals or in the electron field around. And most of that space, if you look, this is the atom. Most of that space is just empty space. There's nothing there. I'm again not going to get into the details of it, but an atom is made of mostly empty space. Now, protons and neutrons have something called one atomic mass unit. This is going to help us understand how we weigh an atom. Electrons, on the other hand, have an atomic mass unit of zero. Now, they technically do have weight, but it's so insignificant to the total weight of the atom that we just give it an AMU unit of zero. So again, proton, positive charge, one atomic mass unit, and its location is the nucleus. Neutron, no charge, one AMU located in the nucleus. Electron, negative charge, no AMU found in the electron shell. These atoms and elements are found on something called the periodic table. Right now, there's 118 elements on the periodic table, and this is because we're kind of finding or inventing new elements now. But these elements are organized on the periodic table by something called the atomic number. And there are other ways that we organize this periodic table, but I'm not going to get into those details for this class. On the periodic table, you're going to see each one of these kind of squares with an element inside. As you can see, we have our element and then our element symbol. You can see that it's O for oxygen. And these are usually one or two letter representations that we use for elements. Above the element symbol is something called the atomic number. And this is the number of protons in the nucleus of that atom. The atomic number or the number of protons in the atom's nucleus determines many of the unique qualities of that element. So oxygen, oxygen has an atomic number of eight. Every single oxygen atom will have eight protons in its nucleus. We're going to talk about how these atoms can have different numbers of neutrons and electrons, but every oxygen atom has eight protons in its nucleus. 
Below the element is going to be the atomic mass. The atomic mass is the average of the mass of all the isotopes for that element. That's why most of these are gonna have a decimal that just doesn't make sense. Like if we have atomic mass units of one, how can you have a decimal here? Well, it's averaging the isotopes masses for that element. The mass number though is the number of protons and neutrons found in the nucleus of that atom. Remember that the neutrons and protons both have an AM union of one. So we just basically have to add up all the neutrons and protons to find that mass number. But these two vocab words are different. They relate to each other, but they are different. Now on the periodic table, we have something called groups and periods. Groups are the vertical columns you see here that run up and down, while periods are the horizontal rows that go across. Usually within these groups, there are similarities within their properties. And as we go along the periods, they are going to change in their properties. The reason why the groups have similar properties though is because they have the same number of valence electrons. We're gonna discuss valence electrons later on in this chapter, but that's why these groups share some chemical properties. This is also one of the reasons why the periods don't share chemical properties is because we have different numbers of valence electrons. There are other reasons, but that's one of them. To round out this section, I'm gonna talk about isotopes. And these are atoms that have different number of neutrons. Remember, all of the same atom of an element will have the same number of protons. However, some atoms of the same element have different number of neutrons. That is called an isotope. This means they'll have a different atomic mass since we're adding or taking away neutrons, which have an AMU or atomic mass unit of one. Let's look at the example here. We have carbon 13. You can see carbon 12 and carbon 14 to the left and right here. Each one of these carbon atoms has six protons. However, if you look below, we have a different number of neutrons. You can see we go from six, seven, and eight. And you can see if we add up the number of neutrons and protons here, we get the number that correlates to the carbon 14, 13, and 12. Six and six equals 12, six and seven equals 13, six and eight equals 14. So all of these carbon atoms have the same number of protons. However, they have different number of neutrons. These are called isotopes. To relate this back to atomic mass, you can see these percentages here are the amounts of each isotope we find typically in the universe. And we average those in a way to find this atomic mass of the atoms. People say atoms aren't important, but they matter.